yesterday during the Styrian Grand Prix weekend was a wet and stormy day from start to finish. So much so that free practice 3 was cancelled and Formula 1 qualifying was delayed by almost an hour as we waited for conditions to improve to a level that allowed competitive racing to go ahead. Similarly, the Formula 2 waited and waited for a window to go racing so late in the day that it had started to get dark. Now F1 does have rain tyres, the drivers are paid to go racing and know the risks, so why all the delays? Why do we have safety car starts or red flag stoppages in the heavy rain? Why can't we send them out there and see true bravery in action, as some are keen to say? Well, let's be real about safety for a minute. While drivers are out there to go racing and do understand motorsport is an inherently risky activity, they're not really paid to put their lives and bodies in overtly outrageous danger. We as spectators don't want to see any death or serious injury. Ideally, we want the risks to be measured in dollars and carbon fibre, a broken chassis, a DNF, and, at worst, a bit of a bruising. It's not actually fun or good to see people get broken or killed for our entertainment. And of course, the lives we're trying to protect also include track staff like marshals who have to take on some of the risk of cars leaving the circuit or spraying broken bits everywhere. With that in mind, why is it that the cars can drive in some rain, but not others? What makes the difference between acceptable wet running and weather that needs to stop a session? Let's start with emergency medical care. It is mandatory that during active sessions it must be possible to get from the circuit to a staffed neurosurgery in about 20 minutes. If a driver has a serious head or spinal injury, there is a crucial window of time to get them to specialised medical care. Some circuits are within 20 minutes driving distance to a suitable hospital, and if not, sometimes local hospitals can be temporarily equipped to be on standby for neurological emergencies. If a hospital isn't reachable quickly enough by road, then the medical helicopter needs to make the journey, and in order to facilitate that, the skies must be suitably clear for safe flight. In heavy weather, the cloud layer can descend to unsuitably low levels, deeming the helicopter unsafe for takeoff. In this case, a session cannot go ahead. If a neurosurgery is within reach, the track itself may still be too wet for an F1 session. See, F1 cars run very low to the ground. The floor is about 30 to 80 millimetres above the track, and heavy rain brings standing water to the track in puddles or even rivers. Under these circumstances, the bottom of the car can slide across the water, lifting the car and reducing the traction between the tyres and the track. Similarly, the tyres themselves can skim over the surface of standing water instead of reaching the track. In these cases, the car essentially floats above the track, aquaplaning or hydroplaning in an uncontrollable way, particularly in braking zones and corners, giving the driver next to no steering or braking control. This, of course, leads to potential high-speed accidents, and if a corner is particularly bad, you can see car after car going off into the same area, which is incredibly dangerous. Now, of course, the wet and intermediate tyres are designed to deal with this to some extent, or we wouldn't be able to go wet weather racing at all. The slick tyres have a smooth, flat tread that, as far as standing water is concerned, may as well be the bottom of a boat. Wet and intermediate tyres have a groove tread, so there are islands of rubber designed to reach the track surface, and grooves designed to give the water somewhere to go. By evacuating the water through the grooves, the rest of the tread can draw traction against the tarmac and control the car. The intermediate tyre has a higher proportion of rubber to groove than the full wet, this is because you want as much rubber as possible drawing grip from the track. The more you reduce the area of rubber, the quicker the tyres will overheat. So if there's not much water to displace, don't go for the tyres with a lot of missing rubber in the tread. You'll notice the full wets overheat very, very quickly as soon as the track starts to dry. And the full wets do have an additional advantage though. They are 10mm wider in diameter. This means they raise the whole car 5mm further off the ground. This isn't really that much, but essentially you are giving the cars extra ride height for free without having to compromise changing the suspension setup. In a wet quali dry race scenario, as we saw in Austria, park ferme rules would mean you'd want a dry setup for the race, so you'd set your car up for that. But the wet tyre allows you some extra ride height on top of that setup. Perhaps making them bigger still would give the wets the operating range for even worse conditions, but that won't solve one of the other problems with heavy rain. So powerful are Pirelli's intermediate and full wet tyres that, at 300 km an hour, they can clear 30 litres of water per second and 80 litres of water per second, respectively. And that's an obscene amount of liquid. That is...
Uh, 3,840 times faster than I can... <laughs> All of that water has to go somewhere and it's right behind the car into the chasing traffic. And that's added to all the water the underbody and diffuser sucks off the ground and throws into the air as well. It's hard to appreciate just how low visibility gets for a driver as we see an elevated view from the car's T-cam. But if we imagine the layers of spray in front of a chasing car and lower our viewpoint, it's clear just how absurdly difficult to see it can get. Anything could be in that spray. Maybe a car spun out and stationary across the track. And that's just some of the inherent danger of driving into blind, thick mist at hundreds of kilometres an hour. And you can multiply that blindness if multiple cars are in close proximity. So if enough drivers complain that they can't see, the race director might deem the track unsafe and bring it back under safety car running or stop the race entirely. Keeping the race going under safety car is often preferable as the continued running of the cars means continued clearing of the water and keeping the track from building up too much standing water. But sometimes, things do just have to stop. And we have to wait for a break in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs>